Okay, in this video I'm going to go through how to create a nested function um, and I'm using Summer 08 question paper 3 as an example and I'm on question 9. So basically um, in this question I'll go to the spreadsheet here and let's just have a look at it. Um, I'm going to go through what the spreadsheet is about first because I think that kind of helps you to understand how to create the function a bit better. So the previous questions um, that I've already done, you had to um, name some cells, which we're going to use in the function, so you need to know what they are. So these rates up here, so the rate column here, we had to name. And basically the whole spreadsheet is um, keeping track of the number of calls that were made, or yeah, that were made over a period of time. That's why we've got dates here. The decode is re related to which department made the call, and then the code here is related to the rate, which is up here. So that would be the type of call that was made, and then we've got a specific rate according to the type of call. So we've got cheap calls. So I had to name this cheap, as you can see up here, it's called cheap. And I had to name this one INTL, which is, I presume means international. And I had to name this one peak. So you can see the names I've given these, and it's the names that we're actually going to use in our function, not the cell references. And then we've got the duration of the call. So what the calculation that we're going to do, it's going to go in this column here. And I'm going to do this for the first row and then copy down. And basically what it's going to do is calculate the number of units for um, each call. So I'll just show you the question. It says in the units column, um, so in cell E16, use an if function to calculate the units uh, used. Um, and then it gives us some certain criteria to help us to know how we should use each code uh, value. So the first thing we're gonna, the first thing to identify, I think, with this question is the fact that we're testing, carrying out a test to see what the code value is. So the first of our um, criteria here is asking if the code value is C, then we're going to do something, and then the second one is if the code is I, then we're going to do something, then P. Each of our tests are going to be different, and so that indicates that we're going to have to use three different if functions to accommodate the three different tests that we have. So this is where our function becomes nested because we're using a function within a function and I'll demonstrate that now. So I'm going to open an if and you'll see that here's the test. So the first thing we're going to do is test out this cell. So I'm carrying that test on C16, whatever's in there. And I'm seeing if that and I'll go back to the question to show you if that is C. So how I would write that is C16 equal to, and in quotations, I need to write C. And I'm going to use a capital C just because it does in the question. Now, the, the value of true will be our calculation that would happen if uh, the code is C. It says then multiply the name cell cheap by the duration. So we're now going to put in a calculation of duration multiplied by, so we use the star, by the name cell cheap. So all I need to do here is type the word cheap like that. It doesn't need to be in quotes because it's an actual cell reference or the name of a cell. Then um, the value is false, so that's anything that is not C will then go in here. And because we know that we have several other code values to compare, um, these will now go in the value of false because if they're not C, then they're either going to be I or P. So we need to show in the value of false now what um, calculations we do for those. So what we're going to do is we have to write if, open the bracket, and then remember the three parts of the function for the if are the same as what we've already got here. So the first part is the test. So the second one we do is if C16 is equal to, and I'll just go back to the question, so if it's equal to I this time, so we're going to put in quotes I, and I'm just going to separate out 
the different parts of the if function by commas. The reason I have to do this with this particular one is because um, I'm not putting them in the function arguments, I'm just putting them in one row, so I have to separate them out, otherwise Excel will think they're just part of all part of the test, which they're not. So if if C16 is true, that means if the code is I, then we're multiplying the duration again by INTL. And this is all in the questions. The question tells us that we would multiply by INTL by the duration. And then we have one more test to carry out. So the fact that we have one more test to carry out means that, again, the value if false is going to be the other test. So we, we need to start a new if. So again, we're going to write if open brackets. And we've, we're going to have quite a lot of open brackets here. So we're going to have to remember at the end to close them. So if C16 equals, and this time it's going to be equaling P, it's equal to P, then if that's true, we can put in that we want the duration to be multiplied by peak. Remember, we're always using the name cell. Now we can put in um, what would happen if none of, none of those values are actually matching. If it's none of those, then we'll look at the question again and I'll show you. So it says, if the code is not C, I, or P, then the units used should be zero. So we just want to return a zero value if, if none of these tests are actually true. So the value of false in this case is going to be zero. So I'm just going to put a zero in at the end there. Because remember, each if function has three parts, the test, value if true, so separated by commas, and then the value if false. And that's how we would write the function. But now I need to remember to close my brackets. How many do I have? I'm just looking in the the function bar at the top. So I've got one open there, two and three. So I need three closed, which I do have. And then if I press OK, OK, so here is our answer. So we've we've carried out three different tests. So we've used three ifs. Yeah, three different ifs nested. And then remember that if none of those are true, that means none of them will be equal to any of these codes, then we have to return a zero. So let's just copy that down. And actually, before we copy down, there's something else we need to do. We need to make sure that we have made certain parts of the function absolute and certain parts relative. So basically, what I mean by that is that C16 is related to this particular code here, which is in blue. Yeah, but we always want that to change. That always needs to change. But the duration, we also need to change also. Now, the only thing that we would need to um, keep the same would be the actual uh, rates themselves. We don't want those to change when we copy the function down. And the interesting point I want to make here is that when we name a cell, so we've used name cells here. So we've used cheap, we've used INTL and peak. They are our name cells, which are relevant to these cell references. We're automatically making those cells absolute, which means they will not change when we copy the formula down. They will always be using the same cell references. So we don't actually physically have to go in and use F4 as we do with other functions where we just use the cell reference. So when you name a cell, you are making it absolute. So what we need to do now is just copy that down. I'll just press enter and move my cursor to the bottom right corner till it becomes a black cross and copy down. Um, and let's just check that. Is there anything other than C, P or I? There isn't, but in your exam, even though there isn't, so we can't just test that, but we could test that out actually by putting in something other than C, P or I and see what happens. It should return zero, which it has done there in that one. So you can test out whether the function works. Obviously, the examiner will be looking to see that the whole function is correct.
by just reading from it but it is worth you testing it out yourself um, so that's how you do this particular um, nested if